let's start off by having a look at how uh, the real numbers work out on my recent sales. Uh, you'll see here a list of the eight lots that I purchased at the January 7th auction and, uh, and what they sold for plus what the fees were for, uh, for acquiring those sales. Uh, you can see the John Deere toy I paid uh, with the buyer's premium. It was a 13% buyer's premium. I paid $11.30 for that. Uh, it sold on eBay for $6.60. Uh, it required paying fees of $1.30 to eBay plus another $0.74 cents in PayPal fees. Now this item I charged for shipping so I, I didn't uh, accrue any shipping costs so there was a loss of $6.74. Uh, the dress form uh, I also paid $11.30 uh, I've not yet sold that, so currently that sits at a loss of eleven dollars thirty cents. Uh, the Kuzan spoons, uh, those I paid two dollars and twenty six cents for, and I have a tentative sale on those for ninety six dollars, and uh, it cost me thirteen dollars and sixty five cents to ship those to replacements.com. Uh, that shows a a net profit of eighty dollars and nine cents. Uh, the match tin I paid two dollars and twenty six cents for and failed to sell that uh, so that was uh, another two dollar and twenty six cent loss the baskets uh, I never showed a picture of these I broke uh, broke these on the way back from the auction uh, so that's a loss of eleven dollars and thirty cents uh, the sci-fi paperback lot I paid two dollars and twenty six cents for and you can see that I had fairly robust sales um, but the, uh, uh, the the fees and the shipping costs um, really ate up a good good chunk of that so uh, I wound up with a net profit of seventy dollars and eighty three cents uh, the lamps I profited forty eight dollars and seventy cents and the novelty catalog another four dollars and sixty two cents so my net profit thus far uh, without having sold the dress form is a hundred seventy two dollars and sixty four cents on the initial purchase of fifty four dollars and twenty four cents this reflects gross sales of two hundred eighty eight dollars and thirteen cents and fees and losses of slightly more than a hundred dollars this brings us to my next shopping venture Currently I have the $172.64 added to the $45 and change left over from my first auction trip. Uh, my current plan is to attend an estate sale on Saturday in Medford. Uh, I found this ad on Craigslist and there were a couple of things that, that interested me about it. The first thing that um, that drew my attention is that it's just a one-day sale. Being a one-day sale, prices tend to be more aggressive uh, in terms of uh, supporting the buyer. Uh, it's, it's only six hours long and they're only giving themselves a single day of opportunity to sell something. So if they truly need to clean the house out, then, uh, then they're going to be willing to, to dicker and deal. Uh, another thing that I liked about this is that uh, is that the details in the written ad, as you can see, are are, are fairly thin, uh, but the pictures were kind of interesting. The last thing that really excites me about this uh, sale is uh, is the 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 line that says the family just added the attic. Sorry, no photos yet. I love attics. And I love the uh, the idea that uh, nobody's gotten a chance to see anything yet. And um, you know, I I love the uh, the discovery of the unknown. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what the contents of the attic are. The first picture you can see here shows a dining room table uh, covered in what appears to be uh, costume jewelry. Uh, the table has a few scratches on it. Uh, it is what is currently 
derisively known as brown furniture or brown wood, uh, which tends to not be terribly popular these days. Costume jewelry, you can see they're, they're putting a lot of effort into it, individually bagging things up. I don't tend to buy costume jewelry at estate sales, and certainly not things that, that get broken down individually. Uh, if you turn to the next picture uh, and completely ignore the items in it, uh, I really like the wallpaper. The wallpaper has a nice dated feel to it. Uh, you can see that the home is relatively well taken care of, but it's aged. Uh, if you look into the kitchen hallway, you can see that bright floral wallpaper, probably from the 60s, whereas uh, this, uh, this wallpaper in the dining room, probably also from the 60s, but still all nicely taken care of. And this suggests to me that the items in the home are going to be well taken care of. Uh, you can see a lot of small bric-a-brac, um, nice glassware in the built-in china closet. The next picture shows a, a continuation of the wallpaper, and I have to say, I love this couch. I need to see if it has any stains on the upholstery, because stains are the absolute death knell of upholstered furniture. Also, I need to make sure that the, uh, the, the I, I'm assuming it's silk damask, uh, upholstery is in good shape. If it's got any holes in it, uh, then uh, then I, I, I would not be interested. But the fringe looks to be in very nice condition, and uh, I suspect that if that is a decent condition, condition sofa, I can probably get three or four hundred dollars for it pretty easily. Uh, the next picture, again, showing all things from about the same time period, 1960s. Uh, the, the coffee table in the center is newer, but the, the wingback chair on the right is definitely from the, from the early 60s. The, uh, the hexagonal top table uh, all the way over on the left, the little stand there, is also from the 60s. Uh, those lamps with the fringe are probably from more like the 80s, but all the little pieces of statuary, those are going to be from the 60s. Uh, the next picture shows this uh, this floral wall art, uh, not particularly interesting to me. Uh, the picture after that shows the uh, shows the the mirror and the matching shelf in sort of a Rococo uh, revival style. Uh, again, most likely from the 1960s, probably Italian. Uh, the picture after that shows this uh, again, probably Italian. Uh, sculpture. It's probably a molded plaster uh, on top of a on top of a column. Uh, again, these are not necessarily items that I'm interested in, but they tend to speak to the time period of the things that they have, and it makes me wonder what other things might be in the house. Uh, the next picture, uh, religious ornamentation on the wall. That doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot for me. The picture after that with the uh, with the round uh, kitchen dinette set, I really love those chairs. I'm very interested in taking a look at the condition of them. Um, I'd probably be willing to, to spend 75 or maybe even $100 for them because I think I can probably get maybe 250 or $300 for that set uh, with the table, uh, but I want to check out the condition. Uh, and I, I also note that there's a, uh, a split down the center of the table which indicates that there may be a leaf for the table somewhere perhaps tucked in over to the left behind the washing machine. Uh, the step stool there I, I might normally be interested in except it looks like there's some some vinyl wear on the uh, on the steps themselves but I'll have a closer look at that. Uh, another picture of the uh, of the costume jewelry, and then you have this uh, this nice three-piece glassware set, the uh, candle set that uh, that has has a nice look to it, and I, I want to check out the condition on that. Uh, I suspect the uh, I suspect that glassware set is probably from the 40s or 50s. 
So there you have it. I'll be in Medford on Saturday morning, bright and early, treasure hunting at this estate sale.